Atlantic Canada has practically been spared from the bug. But they are in full panic mode. You can't even fly there from other provinces. I'm seriously, you know they have a regional quarantine. They actually sent police to, to the roads to do check stops to stop people from coming in. We wanted to send a reporter to cover a story in Nova Scotia. He was banned, not allowed. Fellow Canadian, not allowed. Which brings me to last night's sad announcement by WestJet. WestJet is shutting down their flights to Atlantic Canada. Just poof. Just, it's almost all gone now. Also, Quebec City gone. They're still going to have a few flights to St. John's and Halifax once in a while, but it's devastated. Taking them 10 years to build up. They're just gone now. They're letting go 100 or so staff on top of those they already laid off. That's very sad. Let me play for you some of the video announcement by WestJet CEO Ed Sims. I can't stand the sight of sad of him, I got to tell you. He's the wickedly woke social justice warrior who's come out against Wexit, and he's a weird mask extremist who insists babies wear masks on the plane, even though the government says babies are exempt. He's just an awful, awful political activist, totally contrary to WestJet's roots and their traditions. But even despite his odious politics, I feel for him. Or more accurately, I feel for his staff, who he's laying off. Listen to this. I won't play the whole thing, but just listen a bit. But the lack of travel demand, combined with domestic quarantines, means that sadly, we can no longer maintain our full Canadian network of service. It has taken decades to build this robust Canadian network to its highly competitive position. And over the last eight months, we are beginning to see these efforts unravel. Effective Monday, November the 2nd, we will suspend service to Moncton and Fredericton, New Brunswick, to Sydney, Nova Scotia, to Charlottetown on Prince Edward Island, and to Quebec City. Services to Halifax, Nova Scotia, and St. John's, Newfoundland will continue, albeit with dramatically reduced frequency. That's bad news for passengers, and of course, get ready for fares to rise on whatever airline remains. We have dramatically increased service across Atlantic Canada over the last decade. And everywhere we have flown has seen a doubling of available flight options and a halving of the average airfare. Yeah, that's over. And get a load of this. Airports and Nav Canada, that's a civil aviation service at airports, they've decided to jack up their fees now. They think this is a good time to raise fees at airports now, at least according to this guy. What has made this situation even more difficult is that five of the airports we currently serve in Atlantic Canada are part of a larger group of airports that have announced substantial fee increases. Nav Canada, the federal body responsible for air traffic control, is taking an almost 30% fee increase. With thousands out of work and a COVID-induced recession in full swing, price increases that make air travel even more expensive are not what the traveling public needs or can even afford right now. I'm sure that's true. I mean, Parliament voted to give MPs a raise in the deepest, deepest depths of the pandemic back in April. So yeah, of course, uh, these federal agencies are, are grabbing more money. So it's tough to stay mad at this woke leftist uh, WestJet CEO. But I don't really care about him. He's a gazillionaire. He'll do fine. Uh, when he's done in Canada, he'll go somewhere else. It's, it's his workers I feel bad for. But in his whole five and a half minute speech, I won't play all of it to you. He blamed the, blamed the pandemic and he blamed higher costs and he mentioned reduced demand. And that's all true. But he only said the word quarantine once in passing and then immediately moved on and didn't expand on that. But like I say, I want to fly to Atlantic Canada. I want to send our staff to Atlantic Canada. But we're not allowed to because of what the governments there say. The provincial governments who have brought in the no-fly quarantines and the federal government that continues to bar most travel from the United States, too. Why didn't this brave, woke WestJet CEO mention that? Let me be clear. The virus did not stop these flights. The virus is pretty much gone. 
at least gone to the point where it's no longer categorizable as a pandemic. The masks are just public health theater now. We're, we're safe now. There are some cases, but hospitalizations are minimal. What's stopping people from flying now are the politicians and lockdowns and quarantines and panic mongers of whom Ed Sims is amongst the worst with his weird fetish for forcing babies to wear masks. What a weirdo. That's an extension of the junk science fear mongering that's caused places like Prince Edward Island and New Brunswick to lock down. You know, no one has died from the virus in PEI. Not one person. A grand total of two people have died in New Brunswick. 800,000 people in there. But they're in a total political freakout. They won't pl let planes come in from Toronto or wherever. Rather, they won't let people in. The planes can come in, but not the people, so it makes no sense to let the planes in. That's what the WestJet CEO just said. What those cities all have in common is their panic zones. They're not pandemic zones. Grand total of four deaths in Newfoundland, Labrador. Lockdown. Sure, you can blame the virus. You can even blame passenger demand being low. It's true. But what's stopping people from flying to these very cities that are being shut down now? And what's stopping people from flying to and from the United States is not a Chinese virus. It's Canadian politicians. Too bad Ed Sims politics won't let him say that. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.